Now, you contend that the worst is behind Malaysia. We saw GDP shrink 5.6 percent for 2020, but the outlook is brightening, prompting the central bank to hold rates. And we're going to get the growth forecast from the central bank by the end of this month. Now, going forward to sustain the momentum, will the priority be on growth over fiscal discipline? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sophie, for having me. Yes, uh, this year, Ben Gara will be announcing the GDP, new GDP number for Malaysia. At the moment, uh, we are still sticking to the five, to the 6.5 to 7.5 percent GDP growth for Malaysia, compared to negative uh, 5.6 last year. Um, we have to balance between uh, short-term fiscal uh, injection to the economy over the medium-term to long-term fiscal consolidation. Uh, the focus of the government today is on economic revival. Uh, we have would like to jumpstart the economy, and we're showing positive signs of economic recovery uh, in line with the success uh, in the uh, vaccination program that we just uh, started uh, earlier this month. Now, the government is in the revitalized stage of its 6 our plan to restart the economy. The Pamarkasa stimulus package was announced on March 17th. How will that be funded, and how do higher oil prices factor into this revenue outlook? You have the budget assuming crude at $42 a barrel. We now have Brent trading above 62 the most recent stimulus package, uh, around uh, 20 billion ringgit, uh, 11 of billion ringgit of it is of fiscal injection. Uh, it will be funded through the borrowings, uh, through domestic borrowings. Um, of course, as you have uh, stated, the oil price um, today is much higher than what we have assumed in our budget for 2021. We assume uh, uh, oil price to be around $42 per barrel. Uh, today is higher, so this will also help our fiscal position. Uh, we hope that what we have uh, injected so far the economy uh, will translate into growth. Uh, and we have seen that happen in the last five uh, stimulus packages that we announced, which have helped our GDP numbers by 3 to 4 percent uh, last year. So for this year, we'll be focusing a lot more on sectors that are still affected. And as you know, uh, the tourism and retail sectors are still affected. Uh, however, the other sectors uh, have reopened and, and the economy uh, have uh, restarted uh, for those uh, sectors. Now, Zafal, you have been a proponent of protecting livelihoods. This latest stimulus package provides targeted assistance to those hardest hit, be they individuals or businesses. Uh, petrol prices continue to be capped. What other action is being considered to provide this targeted support? Yeah. Well, if you look at what we've done so far uh, from the first um, lockdown to the second lockdown, we have made many changes in terms of our support uh, to the businesses that are affected and also to the vulnerable sectors. So the most recent ones, uh, we have been focusing a lot more on sectors that are still affected, like I mentioned just now, was tourism and retail. Uh, but for the vulnerable sector, what we have also done uh, is we focus on the B40 and those who have lost their jobs. So we have created a National Employment Council chaired by the Prime Minister himself uh, to monitor uh, the progress uh, when it comes to employment. Uh, we have uh, also injected a lot of uh, fiscal uh, stimulus to help companies to employ and redeploy people, especially in reskilling and upskilling. Uh, so this will be continued to be the key focus as the economy uh, recovers. vaccinations and the reopening, now that goes hand in hand. An improving situation may bolster confidence among households and businesses and perhaps provide an opportunity to widen the revenue base, uh, which the finance ministry is currently studying. What would be the conditions to introduce taxes like the GST? Yeah. Well, the revenue base, as you have uh, you know, mentioned, one of the opportunities is to look, to relook at the consumption tax. You know, it could be GST or it could be any other form of tax. Uh, the, the government, uh, through Ministry of Finance, is uh, doing a study on this. Uh, but in terms of timing, uh, we have decided that uh, this is not the right time to introduce any new form of taxation, uh, given that we are still on our economic recovery phase. Right. But after the economy has recovered, we really need to relook uh, at the widening. Uh, our revenue base, which also includes the possibility of reintroducing uh, consumption tax. Now, moratorium was also placed on loans. Banks subsequently seeing lower credit costs. Is there enough liquidity and capital buffers uh, in position? Yeah, 
There is, uh, well, we at Ministry of Finance, together with the Central Bank, have been uh, watching this closely. Um, as you have seen, we've moved away from a blanket moratorium for all uh, to uh, for all sectors and all individuals and to more targeted approach. Uh, so that have helped uh, us look at making sure that our banks remain healthy. Uh, and today, I'm pleased to say that the, the latest report shows that the banks have enough capital buffers uh, and are showing quite strong uh, performance as well in terms of their results that have been announced the last two weeks. Now, Zafro, the merger of uh, development finance institutions, that was approved late last year. Nazir Raza, uh, potentially in the running to serve as chairman of Bank Pembangunan. What role will DFIs play in the recovery in Malaysia? DFI continues to play an important role. Uh, if you look at the last five uh, stimulus packages that we have announced, uh, we have leverage of the strength of our development banks, the development bank Pembangunan, uh, bank, Exim Bank, our SME Bank, to assist uh, those that have been affected. Uh, so it will continue to be a focus of the government to leverage and utilize the development banks in helping the industry. Um, for in terms of consolidation, this is not something new. Uh, it was earlier announced in the previous budget, uh, Budget 2020, uh, on you know studying the possibility of merging the DFIs, the Development Financial Institutions. Uh, so today, uh, the government can continue to, to do that study, right? Uh, the new uh, focus will be basically to do it in stages uh, to understand uh, to, uh, the landscape uh, and to also make, make sure that um, the actual mandate of all the development financial institutions are, are clear and uh, objectives are met. Now, as part of efforts to digitize the economy and connect more of the population, 5G rollout is targeted for the fourth quarter of this year, and SPV has been established to that purpose. Uh, what's the progress on getting bids from the private sector for developing this 5G infrastructure? Thank you. Sophie, as you know, 5G is the next generation telecom infrastructure. You know, it's seen as a critical asset uh, by all industry players and countries globally. Uh, so Malaysia in, as well uh, is focusing on this as we have just launched our digital plan uh, by the uh, Prime Minister about a month ago. Um, so the focus today is to, we have just set it up about a month ago now, um, and we are going through a process. Uh, in fact, the board is meeting today. Uh, we are going through a process to ensure that we have all the right governance uh, in place before we start uh, the bidding process to build uh, the infrastructure. You know, we will be at an open tender uh, that will uh, start soon, uh, where we will then choose uh, the right uh, partner uh, to build the, the 5G infrastructure for the country. Now, infrastructure spending on rail also will be key projects like the MCR3, ECRL. Uh, what's the potential price tags on these projects and plans to finance them? ECRL is ongoing, uh, Sophie. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, report here that ECRL is about 20% ahead of schedule, um, so it's moving along uh, well. Um, you know, MRT. Three, it's still being studied. Uh, that's a big uh, project, uh, project amounting uh, to close to 50 billion ringgit. That's our circle line. Um, you know, it, it, the study is probably complete by end of the year before we start probably next year. Um, so, and there's a lot of other ongoing infrastructure projects uh, that has been announced in the uh, in the budget. But the key big ones, uh, it will be uh, if, if it happens uh, uh, after the study is completed, is the MRT three, which is a circle line and the completion of ECRL. Now, when it comes to digital banking, that is picking up pace within Asia. Uh, what is the finance ministry's position on providing support for that ecosystem? Uh, should that strengthen that impetus in Malaysia? Um, we are very supportive. The government is very supportive, the Ministry of Finance especially, and we're working closely with the central bank. The central bank has just recently issued guidelines on digital banks. Uh, they are inviting uh, potential uh, applicants to apply uh, for a digital bank. Uh, Timeline-wise, I think uh, they've given until end of June uh, to submit their application to those who are interested to have a license, a digital bank license in Malaysia, and after that, the central bank will probably take six months at least uh, to, to, end up to assess uh, and before recommending uh, to the Ministry of Finance on who 
or which companies uh, should take. We have, so far, I must say that there have been keen interest uh, both domestically and uh, international from international players, uh, and it's something that we we feel that uh, it's good uh, to have, uh, and uh, we will be very much supporting this <coughs> digital bank agenda. Now, turning to markets, uh, the KLCI down about 2% uh, year to date. But we are seeing foreign funds uh, flow back uh, this month. That could narrow that year-to-date loss for the KLCI. What is your sense of the sentiment, this turnaround that we're seeing in attitudes from foreign investors to Malaysian equities? Uh, Sophie, we actually, yeah, you're right. The, in the month of March, if I'm not mistaken, about 118 million net inflow from foreign uh, investors that came into Malaysia after 20 consecutive months of decline uh, in investments from the uh, any decline of uh, outflow, uh, international outflow. Uh, so to us, that's positive. Uh, we've seen the strengthening of uh, our currency. We've seen the strengthening of our bond markets. And so now we see the strengthening of our equity markets. Uh, they think this is in line with uh, the projected uh, economic growth uh, that we uh, we, we, are, we are looking at. Uh, and of course, the strengthening of, uh, I mean, you mentioned about oil price, the commodity prices have also improved. This has helped uh, Malaysia. But more importantly, it also in our trade numbers have also showed very strong numbers. Uh, we are, you know, we have a current account surplus close to 60 billion ringgit already. So this is, all these uh, factors have helped um, uh, in, in, gain interest uh, in our equity markets. Is there any possibility of bringing back the capital gains tax on stocks? No, no possibility. And should Petronas be listed, in your opinion, or other big corporate players? Um, when I was an uh, investment bank uh, CEO, I must say I will uh, agree with you, it should be listed. <laughs> but on a serious note, um, it is. If you look at uh, the financial strength of Petronas today, um, they are able to raise uh, capital in, in the bond markets at a relatively uh, competitive uh, cost. Uh, and as you know, their ratings are similar to the sovereign. Uh, so I don't see uh, any need for Petronas itself to be listed, given that they have ability to tap into the markets. But more importantly, if you look at these subsidiaries, they are all listed, Petronas, Daganan, Petronas Gas, MIC. Uh, the large uh, subsidiaries with did Petronas are all uh, listed companies, uh, so they are also, you know, even their own companies are able to raise money both in the, uh, in, in the capital markets. And Zafal, very quickly, just got to check in on 1MDB developments. What's the progress on reaching settlements with more parties? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I was waiting for that question, Zafi. Um, well, on 1MDB, we in the last one and a half months, we've announced two other, two more settlements, right? Uh, one with uh, Deloitte, uh, amounting to 80 million US dollars, and most recently also with our local bank, uh, M Bank, uh, that's close to 2.83 billion ringgit. Uh, we are still in discussion with other professional entities, other auditors, and legal firms uh, to to seek uh, some funds uh, to seek recovery uh, for for one MDB. So that's still ongoing, and of course, uh, there's also ongoing discussions. Uh, uh, with uh, with the Middle East.